whether you're a team leader, you're a coach, or whatever role you've been given, you must make sure that you do it to the best of your ability. And we must be persistent in whatever we do and ensure that we achieve this transformative process. Very, very important. But we can only do that if I do. All of us say, I do. We repeat it again. I do. So if I do, then I'm sure we make a difference wherever we are starting in whatever capacity we are doing. So let's give Barakokoi another round of applause. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached a very important uh, part of our session, question and answer time. So it can either be a question or a comment, or just an appreciation. But let's make uh, our comments, whatever comments we have, let's make them short so that we can give each other an opportunity to, to air our views. Uh, when I propose, I know you'll be talking for so long, so I'll just be prepared for the questions or for any comments. So what we'll do, we'll take the first five questions, then we'll answer them for comments, and then we we'll take another round. <coughs> so can, can we start? Anything on this side? Uh, okay, two things cross my mind during this session. One that I usually saw that is it. And uh, one of the experiences I had is especially after the military team, when we had the current government, we used to get very frequent uh, requests for very urgent uh, information on project status. And one of the things that was the main thing, uh, indicator I remember, which was being uh, analyzed, was absorption rate. Like if you are 25 percent, you are 100 percent, 70 percent, and so on. And by implication, in the way programs are managed, when you have a high absorption rate, it's implied that you are doing well. Which I don't think is the case. Maybe. And I think that is what maybe leads to the many projects which you even over, which are beyond about the money. Because the criteria which is being looked at, the amount of money spent does not necessarily indicate even that there's policy. Someone else could have done the same project, be innovative, done projects, uh, things concurrently, and probably spent less. The other thing uh, which also came to my attention, when you are Beginning the working on the current medium term plan, I I remember there was some point of the night where we had to say how the how much of the previous uh, MTP the past MTP had been uh, achieved, and because what we had in the MTPs at least from my perspective, the targets were not specific. It was very hard to say that you have done. Uh, something because maybe it is modernization of certain sort of thing, but this modernization was not explained in terms of whether it was like a built computer server which was going to be bought or something like that. So you, could, you end up you end up being a such assessment, but even yourself you're not satisfied that what you have left the Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Hello within the wider uh, results-based management and management accountability framework map. And I think uh, these uh, approaches or uh, concepts which have been with us for close to the last 10 years, because I think I started hearing of RRI, the Android days, MAP, and the RDF, uh, are now two or eight. So what has changed? Uh, have there been some kind of evaluations to find out uh, to what extent has RRI have benefited, you know, uh, Kenyans or, or development work in Kenya? Because I think 10 years is quite a long time. So to what extent has it really contributed to, you know, to development in this country? Thank you, thank you, Goda. My question is much of a reflection. My name is Cecilia Mutano from World Vision. 
I'm reflecting and asking myself, other guy is about us performing better. And you've talked about saying I do. When all of us sign our conference, whether with the government or with private sector or whichever organization we are working, that begins our I do and needs to continue helping us implement. How can we make it a practice or a lifetime of work rather than a one time a hundred days then it was there? That's my question. Thank you. African Parliamentarian Network on Development Evaluation, even the chapter. Uh, I have two issues. One is from what I understood, RRI is a tool within RBM that is result best uh, development results. But what I need to understand is at what level are we measuring these results? Are we measuring them at output level or are we measuring them at outcome level? Then the second one is uh, I've not heard about financial resources in this because sometimes we get a snap or we get challenged uh, of implementing these uh, results, development for results by resources. Where we want to do an evaluation, we want to do monitoring, but we come back by especially uh, public sector, private sector life. And actually, on that particular note, is it? Is it just necessary that RRI comes in when things are not working right? Or RRI is a tool that can be adopted as a start of performance uh, for working so that the results are not used in the very first period, not necessarily considering the last days when most targets are maybe lagging uh, behind. Thank you. It's more or less uh, an issue that Mr. Muruka has just raised on the benefits of RRI. We have been asked for so long, but we have many documented results. We have to from Cecilia, how do we make the IQ better? And then, of course, from our FP from Uganda, uh, at what time do we measure? Do we measure output or do we measure outcome? I think very important question. And then when you have lack of resources, what do you do and how are you spend as best experience? So let's start with the, the director first, and then we have for the moment. As I want to thank the slide of the issue of clear targets. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Sabina. I just, first of all, want to say um, uh, that I've been talking for so many years. But I did expect to be such a wonderful resource person in our front this day. It's really given us a lot of insights. So I think uh, by the time you have listened to him, I'm very sure that you have learned quite a bit. Now, just before I go to the specific questions, I want to inquire that I hope you all have this. No, this, this book is very popular. I think it's Syria Ponder. Interestingly, you may be given a folder and you don't even open it and yet it is carrying the goodies. This is a very important book. It's really talking about MMPR. And if you focus on some specific chapters, you will see in the scenario where Okonya has given a presentation, you can very, very, very simply focus on Kenya and see the scores Kenya has made in MMPR against the five pillars. Interestingly, in Africa, I don't want to make any real problem, but they have spoken that this is really an assessment from the African Forum, where we normally have the annual meetings. The Kenyan performs very well. In fact, in each score of the five areas, I think we are beyond 75%. And everything about 75%, look at it from political leadership, Look at it from accountability for results, accountability for results, planning for results, results based budgeting processes. In fact, leadership for results, we are 3.2 against the pipe. That's a very, very, very wonderful score. 3.2 of pipe is what percentage? Is it over 80%? Yeah. 
If you go to planning for research, and this is really where we have really done wonderful work. This is where Vision 25 comes in, being driven by NTP2. Planning for results, we have scored 4.2 against the 5. That's a very wonderful score. If you go to result based budgeting, we are actually at 4, meaning our budgeting process is more or less informed by results, results of, of, of our vision. Okay. If you go to institutional capacity to deliver our goods and services, this is probably where we are not that very well, but we are still about 70 percent. If you go to information systems, statistics capacity, and identifying identification and evaluations, we are 3.3. If you go to accountability for results, we are 3.1. That became is nice. And when you compare this uh, in terms of the African average, you find that uh, at least we are not doing so bad as the picture they, they portray. Back to clearing of, of clearance of targets and so forth, you realize that we are not just, we don't just set targets. And I remember this question being asked to us in some forum, that how do you arrive at a target, for example? How do you arrive that this year I'll do 500 kilometers of the road, and why not 700, and why not 800? These targets are not just guesswork. They are driven from the overall vision, uh, vision 2030. In other words, cumulatively, what is it that you must do to be able to contribute to vision 2030? And that one is zero down on a periodic basis. And we say we must do at this pace for us to be able to move towards vision 2030. And that's how targets have been set. In fact, uh, I just want to uh, answer the question of, uh, that was raised by the member of parliament from Uganda uh, about the, 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 the actual uh, level at which we do uh, our measurement. And, and I want to begin from uh, a salvage perspective that the results in our normal uh, scenario are based on five categories. If you look at the end of doing anything, if you look at the end of doing our development programs, what we achieve, we tend to achieve is development. That development can only be achieved if we create impacts. And the impacts can only be achieved if we create outcomes. And we can only achieve outcomes if we create outputs. And we can only achieve outputs if we do processes. And we can only do processes if we have resources. So in the whole of that chain, we must have uh, a plan, and this is Vision 2030. So Vision 2030 is a holistic thing that looks at the whole aspect of processes, uh, the whole aspect of resources, go to processes, go to outputs, go to outcomes, impact, and then develop. That's how the results are impacted. Uh, and there is no way you can achieve development if impacts are wrong, or if all impacts are not working for joint. There is no way you can have impacts if outcomes are wrong, they must be right. There is no way you can achieve outcomes if outputs are wrong. And there is no way you can achieve outputs if processes are also wrong. This is where activities come in. There is no way you can do activities if you don't have resources. So everything is in a chain. And should we have a problem in any of those chains? If you don't have resources, then you cannot do process. And if you have resources and you can do processes, there is no way you can achieve outputs if you don't actually do the process right. And the output can only be able to translate to outcomes if they are also correct. And outcomes can change as well. So in each scenario, we look at all aspects of resources, we also look at all aspects of targets, and everything must move in terms. But actually, what is correct is that and this is really the proper scenario, and I, I, I like the, the presentation uh, for Kokonyati, is that in some cases when we have resources, we can spend 20% of the resources only to do 1% of the, the, the job. And actually, we spend even more time to do the same job. That's where we are. You can spend even 30% of the time to do to spend 20% of the resources and only to do 1% of, of the job. So for us to be able to move in tandem, we must do 
of the yolk, 10% of the resources, and 20% of the time. So that you are achieving all these things simultaneously on time. Otherwise, Vision 2030 can only be Vision 2030 if we have put everything in perspective. Otherwise, we can talk about 2050 when we have spent 2030 and so on. So I think in the Kenyan scenario, that's where we are trying to really sum up. Perfection, make sure that all these things move in tandem and resources are available at the at every aspect. And lastly, when we do evaluations, we can do evaluations at the top level, we can do evaluations at development level, we can do evaluations at outcome level, output, result even in the processes level, we can also do evaluations. And even at the input level, when we want to do evaluations at the input level, this is where we want to see where the treasure, how much the treasure is allocated. And we will tell you we have done our job very well, 100%. Probably the problem is with processes. And if you go to the process and you find processes are okay, then you start examining how then do we not have good outputs if the process are okay. So everything must move in tandem. When we establish where there is a problem, then we come up with what we call interpretation measures. Okay, thank you, Director. What he's telling us is that at uh, every level, we need to do an evaluation to the whole of that chain of input to output to outcome. It really depends on exactly what you're focusing on, but you must do an evaluation at every level. So thank you, Director. Let's go to Wana Kokoya. Can you answer the rest of the questions? And in a short way, so that you can also have, I should see so many hands on this side, that we can take it more questions. Thank you, Madam Director. And uh, I'm Machuka. Uh, I want to appreciate the, the comment given by Ms. and uh, of course, I'm going to find it from Uganda. Uh, Chris Mwame Gordon and Cecilia. I will not want to repeat what has been said by the director here. However, I just want to say that uh, and that one on the comment given by Chris, by Musanu, <coughs> the absorption rates and what have you, and whether they are things or they are things. As governments, different governments across Africa, it's also important to note that with coming on board of different tools that help governments be able to implement the strategies that they have. It's important that we bring them on board in stages. We learn from them and we learn from the past. Remember during the first presentation and the second presentation I say it's important to learn from the, the past, even as you move into, into the future. You must also be able to recognize what has failed, what gave us challenges, so that even when you adopt a new tool, it can be able to help us be able to move forward. We are not saying that uh, the tools of RPM, all the different tools of RPM, uh, are applied at one go. Sometimes different countries, different scenarios, may make us to adopt just a few of those tools. However, it's important to note that all those tools are as critical as their application. And in, in, in that uh, same breath, I want to mean that, for instance, Transformational leadership for all these different tools to, to actually take root. There must be a leader, a leader who is able to inspire, a leader who is able to ensure that the government works, the ministries work, state departments work, agencies work, companies and organizations work. That is the leader who will ensure that even when we use a tool like RRI, a tool like performance contracting, a tool like having a work plan and performance appraisal, they actually take root. Without that transformational data being there to ensure that when he or she stands, all of us feel inspired to actually deliver. Sometimes we may have the best of tools, but then the leadership is for that we want to inspire him. And we know we are social beings as human beings. We need someone who will give a part on our part that that was good, you did a good job. That's leadership. So without having the right leadership, even if you brought Jesus Christ and Muhammad here to say now perform, we wouldn't do that. I also want to say there for that, uh, for us, Gordon had asked about RRI having started 2004, it's true. It has actually contributed to a lot of development in this country. The danger is sometimes governments, not just in Kenya but in Africa, do not report on what they have been doing over the years. Even when they report, they report in huge books, 
that uh, my director, uh, Samson, has been saying. Maybe not all of us have seen this kind of books where reports coming from governments are reflected. We love, as Africans and as human beings, to be given snapshots. It's like music. We love entertainment sometimes more than the harder things. So when you hear Kofiolo uh, Mide singing, you, and you love Lingana, you want to move that side. When you hear Dodi Patton singing, you love country music, move that side. Now what I'm saying is that even when government does good jobs, the only challenge that comes in is that we do not give those snapshots, publicizing and telling people this work has been done so far. That's the only danger. However, governments have done quite a lot. In Kenya, for instance, we have flagship projects. From 2003 up to now, there are quite a number of flagship projects that have actually been fast-tracked using RRI as one of the tools, transformation leadership as another one, and based on looking at the reports from MTP1, MTP2, they can be able to explain where we have come from. We, in 2003, we may not have had flagship, I mean, flagship projects, or even MTP1. MTP1 just started some years later. But those are reports showing what has actually been done. And those are some of the results of RRI having been initiated. Lastly, it's also important to note that RRI, at the end of the day, I say it's action learning methodology. Action learning methodology means that you and I are doing something. And when you keep doing something over and over again, it becomes part and parcel of us. That takes us back to where I started my presentation this morning and reminded ourselves that attitude and slave and elephant. Do you remember that? So otherwise, it's supposed to spur that to, to ensure that we keep remembering about that and we're able to do it. So it's about changing of attitude. At the end of the day, we must ensure that there is sustainability of other rights. And also recognize that different changes in government should not necessarily mean that we change the way of doing things, but we must ensure that we focus on doing the right things the right way. That's what I just wanted to point out. But in Kenya, we can always go back to the flagship projects, which my directors here can be able to highlight. SDR is part of the flagship project in Kenya, just for Kenyans who are interested. Having an airport in Isiolo is part of the flagship project, which we started with this RRI framework, and there are quite a number of them. Free primary education is another one. So there are quite a number if uh, we can mention all of them. Thank you very much. Even if it's one airport is another flagship project, those where visitors who came through the airport is actually part of the flagship project, courtesy of RRI, transformation leadership, and the rest. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Kofoya. Baki, very technical language. But remember, we have the bank of our own people outside there who do not understand a lot of this technical language. So how do we simplify? Let us do this. How do we simplify a lot of these documents so that they are easily understood by the people who are outside there and they seek our support? Now we are going to take another round of uh, question and answer. Um, I start now from the middle here. How many hands? You're number one, two, three. On this side, this if I don't see from this side, you shout. Them. Thank you uh, for uh, teaching us this new thing. I'm Nisima Boas. I come from the Parliament of Uganda, representing my county, which is in central Uganda. Uh, I have two questions. One is about corruption. We all understand that corruption is a major setback uh, in all the systems. I wanted to know how you have, you know, managed to avoid the corruption from this destroying your good system during implementation because we have seen some officers, much as it is rapid, but in some governments, especially here in East Africa and I hope so in Kenya, the director may receive maybe a report and put it on his table for three months before approval. So how have you bypass that totally. Two, as one member said, 
that we need to develop together. I want to bring in a spirit of East Africa. That is Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Burundi, and Rwanda. We know that a system managed poorly at the neighborhood can easily contaminate a very good system that is managed in your house. And that is the only reason as to why army men in Kenya and Uganda and Burundi are in Somalia. Very of those comrades, security-wise, so that guns do not spread to the whole region. I know here there is a there is a terrorist group called Al Shabaab. How do you call it here in Kenya? There is a terrorist group that was in supermarket sometime. But as a result of poor managed security system in Somalia. So I wanted to know, because you started this good system in 2004, and you have achieved the results, have you catered for your sister countries as Kenya? Have you catered for Burundi, for Uganda? Do you have a budget for that? A certain mission from Kenya? going to Kampara, teach parliamentarian these good policies, or you are waiting for your system to be contaminated from the neighborhood. <laughs> I thank you. Thank you. Minister of Interior and Kenya government. Uh, there are two concerns for the chair person. Uh, one is a question, and the other one is a proposal to improve uh, future performance. I'll start with the question. Yeah, Mr. Kokonia, we really appreciate you in a very special way for a presentation that was well researched and well presented. So, I appreciate you in a very special way. Now, the question is directly to you on the transformation but Yeah, it's a simple question, but the way it is, it's a serious uh, intervention. What are the authorities or passengers in Kambara has raised issues to do with governance? Yeah? And they are really destroyed by economies. So my question is to Mr. Kokonia, what are the authorities in courts of the passengers who are supposed to transform our economies to improve huh? the quality, to improve things of living so that we are able to deliver quality services to our citizens. Uh, then, I'll now go to the proposal. Yeah? Uh, we, uh, we have been participating in our medium term expenditure framework, program based budgeting, the processes. Now, what you have seen here in this document that has been prepared by, by Dr. Machuka and his team, yeah? the, the sound based budgeting. Yeah? When you've been doing this budgeting, yeah, our experience is very clear. We don't budget yeah, adequately for RNI activities. Yeah, and that is why we have not yeah, transformed our economies. And then I'm proposing, with that in mind, my proposal is that uh, when we are preparing for our budgets, we need to factor adequate financial resources yeah, for those RNI activities to improve service delivery to our citizens, our taxpayers, yeah? And this is what Kukonya has uh, emphasized on, that we need to provide quality and timely yeah, services to our citizens. But if these activities in our era line, yeah, are not properly funded, yeah, we will not be able to deliver quality services to our citizens. I beg to that uh, point. Thank you so much. Thank you. My fellow member has touched on my question briefly, which relates on sustainable use of RRI. He was um, he was asking about sustaining the results, but I'd like you to expand a bit on sustainable use of RRI. The reason being that in your presentation, um, you indicated that RRI runs on Okay, and we know that um, it's not possible humanly to have a constant high adrenaline. 
So it means it picks and drops at specific times. So I'd like to just expand a bit on how we use other line sustainability so that we get the best from this particular exercise. Thank you. And I wanted to ask about what are the limitations to RRI in terms of, for example, where the county government needs to set up MND structures and behind that is a platform that requires performance management plans and all that. So what happens, how can RRI um, contribute to that? Is it only, can it be used for maybe setting up systems or is it only meant for maybe projects and things like that. And then again, in terms of the structure of RRI as you presented it, what happens when it, in, it will involve multiple departments in the county government? So if you look at how RRI maybe has been carried out in the national government, it's maybe, um, maybe it involved only one department, making the structure easy to actually work with. But what happens in the county government when you have to involve multiple departments. For example, if you were to set up the whole MND framework in the county, you will need the contribution of PSM, the planning department and all that. So what happens in that type of setting? Thank you very much. Question from our county plan. Then how do we carry one another along as East Africa? Do we have maybe a framework? We have a mechanism where all of us see as East Africans and manage to talk about these things so that we carry one another along. So that the loopholes in one can be avoided in another in another country. Basically how to share these best practices. Then of course the whole issue of sustainability of our I think it has been a concern to Mr. Martin O'Donnell to, to uh, our friend from Makwedi, from Nakuru, from Marcelo, it was all these issues about sustainability of our ride. And these passengers on this bus, who are they? So, Mala Machuka, I would like you to respond to that first one. And the MID, as it relates to the region, and how to avoid the loopholes. And then we can allow Mala Kokoya to answer all those other issues about sustainability in our life. Uh, we have the bus. Let's not mistake the bus. You know, we have another bus in the middle. We have another bus there. But this is not that bus that we are talking about. We are talking about this transformative identity. Who is on this bus? So let us know the qualities of that. So, Yeah, uh, let me respond to those issues that have raised that they will answer. Thank you for the correction question. Uh, I think I'm sure we have invited the people from correction to the UK and they will be able to respond very, very well on that. But let me say this. Yesterday I was watching a program on the TV. Somebody was talking and saying, uh, if you go to many institutions, even many offices, they are written corruption free zones. The way it was interpreting it was like corruption should be freely practiced. I think because you find that the same institutions where we have corruption uh, free writing, if you go inside, this is really where you find corruption data, including our judicial systems. You find that transactions of corrupt practices are being done in those same institutions. So what I'm saying here is that um, corruption is very complex. If you look at it from a very broad perspective, that it has to take two people practicing, whoever is giving it and whoever is taking it. And it's really very interesting because at some stage, you find it difficult to isolate where somebody is saying he's getting a gift or he's actually practicing corruption for going to be rendered as well. And you mentioned something about uh, a process that takes three months that probably will be taking a, a lesser time. I'm very sure that the way we have been going around it in Kenya here, though I cannot say that uh, uh, we have drastically improved in fighting corruption because our indicator of 
perhaps if you want to align your progress reports, which we shall be presented tomorrow, so you find that the data that we use is um, how many Kenyans are aware of corruption. We don't go, that to me is an outcome. We don't go into the outcome of saying how many of those who are aware have actually stopped that. Knowing that corruption is bad is not by many. But practicing to, to resist from it is where we are challenged. I think this is really the outcome that we need to report. Because if you look at the, the trends, you find that uh, what's happening if you look at the newspapers, you find as if corruption is increasing. But let me say this it may not be increasing as it may be portrayed, it is because the reporting of it has increased. You know, you might be thinking that uh, some countries' uh, corruption have gone down only to realize they don't bring the power. So, reporting on corruption is what is making it look like serious. Now, imagine that if we didn't report about the corruption that is taking place in some, some of our airports, then we'd be thinking we are right. But if they are, that the seriousness in terms of addressing that problem. And I agree with you that there is no way. We can fight that price alone if our neighbors are not in the same. Because contamination then becomes very easy. I, I remember when we had a session with the South Sudan became independent, they refused that Kenya and they said, You people we came will want to become middle income economy by 2030. But here in Southern Sudan, who are your neighbors? I don't think the same social because we are neighbors, we might bring you down because of our that contamination. So the only way we can move forward. Is if we bring everybody else on board so that we think the same way. And I think this is really the spirit in which we have the African Union, this is why we have the African political practice, this is why we have the region, we look at it in terms of regional levels, this is why we have the East African and the East African community to make sure that we are actually moving in the same direction. Now, number two, uh, I, I just want to respond to Odur from. Uh, Kabiyama um, University, uh, who say that uh, how can we sustain uh, our lives? And this is a very, very, very important uh, question. I say it's important because when we achieve, we achieve outcomes, and I think I want to mention, I want to categorize our lives as output based. Because we achieve outputs, and then beyond those outputs, we stop. For example, and I like putting the Ministry of Health where we uh, isolated a case for bringing malaria down. And the RRI was to make sure that the hospital nets and the malaria drugs were all procured in other days, be able to address the problem. But when you look at the outcome level, malaria continued to increase. So what happened that is that we procured the two, their drugs, and they were to them and stopped them, but we never gave them to the people. And not just giving them to the people, because when those who give people was to them, then what happens? They don't use them. So when you go to do an evaluation and outcome, you find that they are still sick, they are still having malaria. So it means the outcomes are not related to the outcome. And yet, on the output level, the scores are very high. But when you go to the outcome, you have more cases. Uh, in hospital before. So that is really the sustainability aspect that we need to go. Now, on the airport, and I want to isolate the Sumo Airport, we have done an evaluation. Interestingly, the evaluation, the findings of the evaluation, of course, are in our report, but interestingly, the specific incomes generated as a result of that investment are yielding positive results. So that's just a summary that there are now many more aircraft coming in fact. Before, you would only find uh, one, one flight to Sumu that day, but now you can go up in the day. That itself is an indication that things are changing and they are moving forward. And, you know, there are many more international uh, arrivals and budgets actually associated with that. So, in an answer, despite other challenges, the, the net gains are more positive than, 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 the, than the negative. I think I want to stop there and ask you for it. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Proponent.
now answer the balance of the questions, and particularly the concerns from our county uh, government on this issue of the structure and the limitations and the actualization of the RRM. I think it's really the help to move forward. They need to give some answers before they can move on. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, the members have asked questions. Nina. Now, uh, of course, just quickly from Uganda, the aspects of governance are critical. I wish I can do this after a few going on right now. And uh, Uganda, I want to leave you very well that the country has been has at least two years after a year and Kenya is. Uh, that, of course, aspects of governance have clearly brought down so that among the African peers, we need to know where do we stand. In that report, I expect that uh, will be shared widely so that even you as the members of parliament in your country, and also having members of parliament in Yana, should also be able to interrogate the African peer review report that will eventually come out. So it's also a duty on your side as the legislat legislative uh, members. That's what African peer review, where you are expected to be uh, something true. And of course, we need to have more training and sharing lessons from other uh, democracies. Um, RRI, yes, RRI focus on results and still on the board. It focuses on the results, we want to see results coming out. But we're also saying that it's not necessarily focusing on processes. You spoke about whether corruption may come in because we are not necessarily focusing on processes. What I would like to tell you is that the laws of the land and the, all those policies are not supposed to inhibit the, the implementation of a particular program or project that is under question. The laws should be able to facilitate. Even the timelines given, and that's an aspect of procurement, those who are procurement officers in here know, and I use a Kenyan example, that. When you're procuring a service or a product, you must have pre-qualified institutions that are expected to be procured. And those that have been procured, I mean, uh, uh, those that have been shortlisted, you can only pick from those that have been shortlisted. The problem is not uh, uh, the procurement itself. The problem, the problem is on aspects of governance, aspects of interest from people. So people allow themselves to be uh, to be compromised. And that takes us back to when we started our presentation, attitudes. How do we want this country to move forward? So let's keep interrogating ourselves. Because we will throw the, the we will throw the arrow on the other side and we will hit you. There's always the giver of corruption and there's a recipient of corruption. More often than not in this country, I'm in most parts of Africa, we always focus on the recipient of the corrupt deed and not the giver of the corrupt deed. I'm sure we are now waking up to the reality that we also need to get more of the, the giver and the recipient of that. But back on procuring, if you have institutions, if you have companies or organizations that have been shortlisted or pre-qualified to give a particular service or product, the law is clear. You can only pick from them. But if you walk outside them, then already that's corruption. You are bringing on board a company or an institution that is not pre-qualified. Now, speeding it up, for as long as you have this institution that have been uh, uh, reported and you picked on them, if someone has accomplished, these aspects of timelines are not supposed to inhibit work from being done. Sometimes just to ensure that, yes, there's due process, but again, we've not broken the law. And if people have a problem, they are always at tribunal uh, looking at the aspects of procurement to say, no, this was given unfair. So I'm not going to go into that. Sustainability. A uh, transformation bus, a uh, question from interior. You remember in Ireland I was talking about uh, players, team members. Team members at national government, if we are talking about a ministry, for instance, of interior the coordinator of national government, then the, the, the sponsor, the political leader there is actually the, the minister or the cabinet secretary. The sponsor should be the principal secretary because he or she is the one who ensures that resources are available and that whatever you are doing is within the budget is within what we 
There's no magic procurement plan, and there's a final a way that has to be prepared. So you cannot pick it from outside what is in the outside the value. And then again, you have to bring on board. You have to bring on board uh, all players. If it's a ministry, you have someone from security, someone from procurement, someone from HR, someone from ICT, because all of us must participate in all these, these teams. And one who has knowledge in that target area of RRI has to take the leadership. So that's very important for us to know. Transformation for us, all of us, that's the bar, that team is that bus we are talking about, specific bus that's moving, if you are looking at security. If you are looking at service delivery in a different area, then there's another bus. There could be so many bars that ensure that we get that result that we want. But we must always insist that let's have a diverse <coughs> team of players in this uh, particular target area. And we must practice good governance to be able to give those quality services. We've been signing them before budgets are even approved, or sometimes after. So that brings in close that you have to spend on what is outside. And RRI expect that we are not, RRI is not a new project. Again, it's for all of us. When we talk about RRI, it's not a new project we are starting. RRI is what has been put in the plan. You can only put, you can only RRI or fast track the resource on what is within the plan and the budget. So don't start a new project. So what you are spending, you are spending what is within that budgeted area. So it's not a new project, and it's a continuation to change our attitudes. Lastly, um, and that's the only way we can sustain our life. It's not that we want to do it now and forget. We want to do it now. When we are through with that, we move to the next and to the next and to the next. We keep the momentum being there. So that all of us then change our attitude and realize that it's not just about our life. It's about us actually doing our work. So the problem is that we look at it like it's a project we want to do in 100 days and forget. So it needs to be a continuous process. Uh, for the counties, you talked about team, uh, team players. Uh, counties, you can still use the framework of the national government, how it does the work. We have CECs who are more or less like ministers. And there are projects in different ministries. So you need to have your own target areas. Like the Minister for Roads or CEC in charge of Roads wants to do a program. A program. It is that ministry or that particular department as a under a minister that puts together its team players. So that you don't just copy national government, but you also bring within what the player that you have in that particular level on the ground. You have your own simple governance project. And I said at the county level governors are the are the political leaders, the cabinet the principal the County secretaries are the sponsors because they have to ensure that resources are available. The CECs themselves, the members of the cabinet themselves, in their respective areas, are to be the resource leaders because those are the ones the cabinet, the, the governor, will hold accountable to say, What have you delivered in your ministry? You know? So that should not be a problem. Uh, I think uh, those are the only all issues I wanted to say. So there's no overlap on policies, for instance, like procurement, and what needs to be done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bana Kakona, for those responses. I'm sure maybe some have not been, uh, if you feel you have not been adequately uh, responded to. We have the lunch hour, we have the tea time, we have the evening. I'm sure, particularly for the county government, please make sure you get more of Bana Kakona so that you speak to him more. Yeah? Speak to him more so that you, when you go back, you go back to the right answers. And uh, what I was actually doing here also with this question and answer time, I was also, also doing M and to see whether people actually understood. And uh, the max I've given you is 99.9%. Uh, <laughs> so thank you very much. You have been very active, all of you. Um, I want to thank the presenter, Banakaponya. Uh, it has not been easy for you, but you have handled it very well. Let me also thank the director for his active participation and for all of you. I believe we have now had lunch. Uh, now, I'll now give the mic to our MC so that we can direct us.